Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to share with you something that's been very useful to me over the years, and that is recreating the Fresnel effect. So the idea behind the Fresnel effect is that your reflections are going to be less intense on objects that are directly facing camera, and then any any part of the surface that's facing away from the camera, it's going to be more intense. So you can see here in the cylinder, we have the center that's looking straight at the camera's black, and then we have the edges and the bottom are much more reflective. So that you'd be using this sort of as a mat for your reflection passes. So this can be very useful and you don't just need to get renders with um, position pass and normal pass. You can also recreate it in the scan line render if you have access to the geometry. So let me show you how to set this up. What I have here is basically an array of geometries, right? And I'm going to plug in the camera here just so you can see. So the camera is looking straight at, at these uh, cylinders and spheres, right? So because this is all based off of facing ratio, that's, that, that's, that's how this works. It's like anything, any, any normal that's pointing directly at the camera, it's going to be zero. And then anything that's completely away from it, it's going to be one. So that's why we go from the range from zero to one or, or, or black to white, if you will. So what I have, I, nothing, nothing fancy here. It's just a constant, just to give it a bit of color. Right. And then uh, it's just, like I said, a series of expressions that make this happen. So important, important to note, um, when you go into the scanline render, what you want to go ahead and, and do is you want to go into the shader tab and make sure that you enable output vectors. So that's not on by default. And then you also want to make sure that you're rendering a position pass and a normal pass, right? So if you, if we bring in a scanline render here, or just let me bring in the classic scanline render, there we go. So if we go to the shader tab here, by default, it's going to be off. So you want to go ahead and open this out and say, I want the position pass, so P world, and I want normal pass, so N world. So that's that's kind of it for, for setup in terms of the scanline render. So once you have that, if we look at our layer contact sheet here, you should have, you should have, let me turn on labels. So we have position pass and normal pass. Okay, good. We have everything we need now. So the next step is you want to go ahead and shuffle out those position, the, the position and the normals pass, right? So that, that's what you want to go ahead and do. And then once you have that, this is going to run through an expression. Each each of these passes is going to be run through an expression that is going to be then merge. Uh, it's going to be merged with a merge expression node, and there's an, another expression there. So I'm going to just so I don't go very deep into the expressions, I'm just going to share my screen here on what those expressions look like. So if you look here on the left hand side, this is the expression that I'm using for the position pass. And then on the right hand side, this is the expression that I'm using for the normal pass. OK, and then once those two are set up like we have here, so right after the shuffle in the merge expression, this is what it looks like. Right. So the, the, this is the expression here. And again, I'm like always, I'm going to be sharing the script on, on the description below. So you can just go ahead and grab it and play around with it. Um, this is more interesting than going into the math of what's happening behind it. So that way you can just grab it and you're up and running. So let me show you what this produces. So if I go back to Nuke here. Uh, so if we go into our magic expression, you see that we have basically what we're trying to achieve, right? So anything that's looking straight at the camera is going dark, it's going black, and then the rest is going white. So usually the, the result is too soft, at least for my liking. So what I do is I always chuck on a grade. And then I just adjust the black point and the gamma just to more or less achieve. You can achieve, you can control the fall off here, which is really nice. So you, again, because you're going to be using this as a mat, it's it's not really breaking anything else. So you have full control of how um, of how this uh, Fresnel effect is going to affect your renders, right? So again, with the black point and the gamma. Okay. So let's say let me give you an example of how this would look like. So what I have here is the same setup, right, as we just looked at. And the next thing is I've gone ahead and I've put my array of geometries inside a sphere with a checkerboard, right, J just so we have something to reflect. And if you don't know how to ref um, 
how to render reflections in Nuke. I've covered that a few weeks or months ago, so I'm going to put a, a, a link here so you can go ahead and check that out. And that's going to have this exact same setup on how, how I've rendered these reflections. So if I look through the ray render output, what we're going to get here is basically all of our geometries reflecting that outer sphere that's there, right? And it, it has a bunch of black stuff, and that's just uh, the, the pieces reflecting each other, right? So that, that's why that's happening. So now that I have my ray, my ray render output, I can go ahead and copy the alpha from my original render of the array, right? Just so I can pre-mold that and get rid of the outer sphere that I'm not interested in. I, I just want the reflections, right? So we arrive at this. So this is, let's call this our reflection pass in this case. And now if we if we were to do it the normal way, right? So the non-Fresnel way, we would just plus it over our render. So we'd grab our render here, right? And we would plus it with our output from the reflection pass. So this would be our output. So, okay, cool. Maybe that's what you're looking at. But if you want to do, if you want to give it that Fresnel effect, what you want to go ahead and do is you want to run it through our stack here that I've, that I've covered a minute ago. And then you adjust the settings on the grade just so you can say how, how much or how wide you want that to be. And then, of course, you want to shuffle that into the red, green, or blue channel just so that we get an alpha. Because if we look at the alpha of this, it's just going to be black. So we want to turn that into a mat that we can actually use. And then, instead of just plusing it, we're going to plus it, but we're going to mask it by our Fresnel effect here. So if I look at the output here, what you're going to see is it's only going to be reflecting in those areas where it is white. right? So that, that's, that's the effect right there. Uh, you can, of course, uh, invert it if you're looking for the inverse, of course. Um, and again, because it's so quick to set up, you can just save this and then just add it to your tool set and then just quickly chuck it on if it's something that you're trying to give it a specific look. I figured I'd share it because it took me uh, it took me a while to figure it out when I was just starting. And I, it's something that I constantly tap on to uh, over the years. So hopefully you find this helpful. I know it's a quick one today. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have other way of doing this. I, I know there are other ways. This is just my way of doing it. Um, so I'd yeah, love to hear it. All right, cheers.